If you've been around these parts for a while, you know that I often talk about the importance of clear, healthy, and effective communication. So much so that I created an entire in-depth workshop about it, appropriately called Speak and Feel Heard, so that you can learn how to speak in ways that are clear and effective so that you are heard, valued, and respected. If that's something that you want to learn the specific skills around, then you can check out my workshop, Speak and Feel Heard. The um, link is in the description below. But one question that often comes to me is when people reach out and say, okay, Julia, I know that I don't need to bring up absolutely every thought that crosses my mind, everything that bugs me, everything that I, that I think. I don't need to like blurt out everything all the time. I don't need to make everything an issue. But how do I know when to speak up and say something and when to just sort of sort it out myself and let it go? How do I know when to do that? And so today, I'm going to give you a list, kind of like a guiding list to reference back to next time you're in a situation where you're like, should I say anything or should I just like let this one slide? When do I want to address the issue and when can I just sort of sort it out and let it go? I'm gonna give you some guidelines so you can save this video, you can take some notes, put it in your back pocket and bring it out next time so you have some guidelines to go by. That is coming up in just a moment. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you are back, it is always good to have you. Make sure you do say hello. And oh, uh, if you get something out of video, if you like it, if you could hit the like button, that would be amazing. If you wanna get notified when new videos come out, subscribe to the channel. That would be amazing. Um, and if you get something out of this, I want to hear about it in the comment section below. So take a moment for that as well. That also would be amazing. <laughs> Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, where we are going in depth into sorting out what makes us tick, what makes us talk, what is going on in our brains, how to make sense of it all, and how to live more fully and freely and intentionally with the short time that we here, have here on this planet. You can get more information about the Shift Society in the description below. Either way, I help heart center humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. So how do you know when to speak up and say something? And how do you know when to just sort yourself out and let it go? The first one, it's time to speak up when you know, maybe even from experience, that you are going to regret not saying anything. So, Let's say that you're in a meeting at work and your colleague takes full credit for either your idea or for a joint project that you worked on together. And without wanting to like shove your way to the front and be like, no, that was me. How dare they say that? I was the one that did it all without, you know, being obnoxious about it. Being able to say, you know what? If I don't say something, the past has shown me that if I just sort of keep quiet, then this person gets all the credit, perhaps they get the next really great project, they get to have more opportunities that help them move up, they get you know, that recognition that maybe contributes to their annual bonus or raises that they're getting, and uh, I would like to have the credit that is due to me. And I would like to you know, be able to let people know that no, like I had a part in this, this was my, I contributed to this as well. This success was also becoming because of me and being able to speak up about that, being able to say, 
you know, yes, you know, so-and-so did play a part in this, but this was a joint effort. We worked on this together. Or, you know, thanks so much for running with this idea that I had. Or however it is that you communicate, whatever it is that you want to, how you want to make sure without, you know, being rude about it, but just saying, hey, or, you know, taking your boss aside later on, just being like, so that you're not, you know, kind of publicly embarrassing this person to be able to take your boss aside and be like, I know so-and-so had said that this was their idea, but I just wanted to know that this was something that I had come up with that we had discussed and um, they ran with it or we ran with it together or, you know, this was a joint effort or this was something that I had come up with and they had actually taken that and taken credit for it. Um, and I just, just kind of wanted you, I wanted you to know that because this was something I worked really hard on. And so I want to make sure that I am also getting credit for that or being recognized for that. So just being able to communicate that in a way, whatever way is clean and classy and respectful, um, but also speaking up about it. If you know that like, I will regret this if I don't say anything, it's going to eat away at me. Maybe even it's going to cause all kinds of resentment towards this colleague and I'm going to have a tough time working with them from here on out. Or maybe it is that you take your colleague and you're like, hey, like honest, like just being honest with them, be like, hey, this was my idea, something that we discussed. Um, were you aware that you just, you took credit for my idea? Or is, the reason, is there a reason why you took credit for my idea? And it might be something innocent. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You're right. It was your idea. I just kind of thought that I'd come up with it, but obviously I came up with it because you had already said it. That's why it occurred to me. Or, you know, like most people are not trying to be like sneaky and deceitful, could have been an honest mistake, um, could have been an oversight. So just being able to address that with them. And then if you need to ask and be like, okay, well, I mean, fair enough, mistakes happen. But if you could go to our boss or our manager and just let them know that it was my idea, whatever that is, right? Whatever that issue is, if you're like, you know what, I am going to regret not saying it. Not saying something may even cost me significantly later on. So I am going to figure out a way to address this in a clean and classy way and not just let this one slide. The next kind of guideline for you to know when it is time to speak up is if you notice yourself abandoning your own comfort in order to preserve someone else's. So this comes up a lot. It, I think it comes up for all genders, but I think it often comes up more for people who are socialized as women because women have been socialized to just be pleasant, be pleasing, not make anyone uncomfortable, not ruffle any feathers, just kind of go along with whatever, be sweet, right? Like traditionally, that's how women have been socialized. And so there is some, some of that sort of ingrained beliefs that we might not even be fully conscious of, but often for many among us, there is still that, whatever gender you are, but particularly for those socialized as women, just because of history. If we look back on history, how women were expected to be, this is part of that. And so we are kind of socialized, not kind of, we are socialized to just not make anyone else uncomfortable. But what if it's a circumstance where someone is making a sexist remark or a racist remark or um, making a pass at us and it's just inappropriate for them to be flirting with us, hitting on us, and it's making us uncomfortable, but we don't say anything. And asking ourselves, why don't we say anything? I am feeling very uncomfortable with what this person said, the comment that they made, the thing that they did. I'm feeling very uncomfortable right now, but I don't want to say anything because I don't want to make them uncomfortable. I am feeling really uncomfortable, but I do not want to say anything because I'm worried about making them uncomfortable. So I am trying to prevent them from becoming uncomfortable after making me uncomfortable. Instead of being able to say, you know what, that's not okay. That doesn't work for me. I don't like that. Please don't say things like that. Please don't do things like that. Please stop. Right? Being able to say no. That's not cool. That doesn't fly here. 
instead of just like laughing along uncomfortably or just sort of sitting there feeling uncomfortable and almost like you've been slimed. So when is it time to say something? When someone says something that is inappropriate for you, that is making you feel uncomfortable and you are trying to protect their comfort while meanwhile preserving your own. The next guideline of when it's time to say something is when something has been eating away at you for days. So let's say your partner makes some kind of comment, something that just sort of bugged you. Maybe it's about your eating habits. Maybe it's about um, your outfit. Maybe it's about your cleaning preferences. Maybe it's about the type of music that you like, whatever it is, whatever that thing is, your, comment, your partner made some kind of comment. And at the time you're just like, oh yeah, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Or it kind of hit something in you, but you're like, oh, should I say something? Or is this something that's like an issue for me? Does this really bother me? Or am I just sort of like a little bit trying to take it aback in this moment, but it's actually not that big of a deal. And you don't know yet. But if after a couple days, it's kind of gnawing away at the back of your brain and you're like, I just want to clarify this. Were they making a passive aggressive remark? Were they trying to like cut me off at the knees? Were they trying to like, you know, insult me or hurt me? Were they just sort of, did the comment they make made me kind of think of something else that I just need to clarify because I'm not super clear about what's going on here and it's still feeling uncertain and you're still kind of thinking about it a few days later, then it's time to say something. It's time to bring it up be like, you know what? You said this thing the other day and it's been kind of playing in the back of my mind and I wanted to clarify. Just wanted to clarify what you meant, what was going on, what was happening here. Then if that is the case, <laughs> it is time to say something. Another time to make sure that you are saying something. And this is a big one for my conflict avoiders, which I think most humans are conflict avoiders. There are some humans who actually do really like to be combative, really like conflict, but I think most people don't want to fight. Most people don't want, uh, well, uh, now that I say it out loud, <laughs> not always, not everyone always wants conflict. <laughs> But we look at kind of the state of the world right now. We look at the state of social issues, of issues of politics. Yes, some people do like to combat. Some people do like to argue. Some people do like that conflict. Um, but let's just make a statement that not every human being always wants to have conflict. So for those among us who tend to be people who shove things under the rug, who just like like it's like you're letting something go, but not actually letting it go. You're not addressing it, but it's festering, right? You're not saying something, but it's like percolating under the surface and it's bugged you and you haven't been able to resolve it. And it's kind of sitting there and then something else happens and you don't say anything and it kind of gets under there. And then something else happens and, and, and you don't say anything and then it gets under there. And all of a sudden you've got this kind of big pile of crap under the rug and then, you know, one more thing, someone kind of, kind of comes and like steps on that pile or you add more one thing, one more thing to the pile and the whole thing implodes or explodes. And that's when you end up blowing up, right? When it's just sort of building up and building up, you're not saying anything, you're not addressing it, you're not dealing with it. And then you just like let it build up and build up and then you end up exploding. And that can be really harmful and often it's very harmful and detrimental to relationships instead of being able to just address things as they come up instead of letting it all pile up, being able to just sort of keep that tension from building by addressing things more, a little bit more casually. Like if someone is making comment made sort of like an underhanded comment and a joke at your expense, instead of just being like, ha ha ha. And then putting on just being like, Hey, like that doesn't feel good. Like, please don't do that. Or, you know, like I wouldn't joke about you in that way. I wouldn't kind of use that vulnerability and make fun of you like that. Um, so I know you, you might think it's funny. I don't think it's funny. I don't like it. Please don't do it. Right. So just being able to address things as they come up. Or if someone is always kind of being really snappy with you and you're just like taking it and taking it and taking it, instead of just being like, hey, like, 
don't, I don't like it when you talk to me that way. Could you just be kinder? Could you just manage your tone? Could you, you know, just be more aware of the fact that you love me? I know that you might be stressed. I know you might have a lot going on right now, but remember I'm on your side. Can you be kind? Because, you know, knowing that if the person's just always kind of snapping and always kind of short with you and always kind of just being like, not always, I shouldn't say always, but often that's coming in and you're sort of taking it, that resentment builds, that anger builds. You're, you start to kind of build that up underneath and then one day you just snap and you're like, oh my gosh, you're always so mean. Why are you like this? Right? Because you haven't addressed it. You haven't dealt with it as it's coming up. So the time to say something is when you find yourself often pushing things under the rug and that rug is just piling up ready to just like one more thing or one little bit of pressure on it and the whole thing comes spewing out. So just getting better at addressing things in a more casual way until it builds up and you blow up. The next guideline for when you should say something is when saying something can help. So my example of this is just a little while ago, my parents were out watching my daughter at one of her soccer games and my daughter scored a couple goals, which was awesome. Um, you know, but at the end of the game, that's all they focus on. Like, hey, you scored that goal and you got that goal in and you did that, right? And what we know from parenting and from you know, trying to do our best to, to parent our kids in a healthy way is that as humans, it's better for us. Well, okay. It's good for us. I personally think that both is good to recognize, but research shows that we need to focus more on things that are within someone else's control, like their effort, their dedication, their persistence, their focus, right? Those things are within our control. So acknowledging that and praising that in a child, being like, hey, I noticed you worked really hard. I noticed that you didn't give up. I noticed that you, you um, kept going. I noticed that you um, just really tried your best. I noticed that you had some really great footwork going on there. I noticed that you... Um, yeah, you just like kept on it and you kept enthusiastic. I noticed that you were being really encouraging of your teammates, right? Being able to point that stuff out instead of just focusing on the outcome, just focusing on, oh, you scored a really good goal because scoring a goal in soccer is not always something that a child is able to do, right? Getting a great result is not always possible, even with a lot of effort. So then what research shows is what happens, and most of you were probably parented this way, is that you were only ever recognized for outcome, and so now you think that your value only comes from your results, which makes you only focus on your results and then feel like a loser or a failure or not good enough if you don't get the result that you wanted instead of taking a moment to recognize and be proud of yourself for your effort, for your process, for what you put into it along the way. And so to make a long story even longer, I was talking to this with my parents and I just said, you know, awesome that Hadley like scored these goals. Like that was awesome. She had a couple good assists. She had made some good passes and it's also important with children and with human beings in general that we recognize their efforts, that we recognize their process. And so me just expressing this to my parents and just saying like, yeah, it can be really good for kids to just also recognize their process because that's something that they have a lot more say over. We have a lot more say over how much effort we put in, how dedicated we are, how persistent we are, how many times we get back up after we fail, how much follow through we have. We have more say on that. So that encourages effort. That encourages showing up. That encourages keep keeping going and being proud of ourselves for that instead of only valuing ourselves for our outcomes. So I was talking to my parents about this, not quite explaining it that thoroughly, but just letting them know that acknowledging process is important. I also think that acknowledging outcome is also important, but it's not the only thing and it's often 
not the most, well, I would say most of the time, it's not the most important thing. I mean, to take the focus away only from outcome and really also recognize effort. Outcome is absolutely important, but effort and process is often even more important. So I spoke up about that because I thought that that could help. That could help them in their relationship with my daughter. That can help my daughter feel more confident because she has a lot more say over her effort, over her process. And so in that situation, speaking up could help. Another guideline for when to speak up and say something is when the relationship is open to honesty. I'm going to also talk in another video about when not to say anything. And obviously, when not to say something, giving a little spoiler here, is when the relationship is not open to honesty. When there is a threat of being harmed in some way, if you are honest. And I know that this is a real thing from, for a lot of people. Maybe it is for you where you're like, you know what? Like, I want to be honest, but every time I do say something, this person comes back at me even harder. Or they, you know, no matter how kind I am, no matter how respectful I am, if I do bring anything up, they give me the silent treatment for a week. And so there might be some people in your life who are not open to feedback who are not open to honesty. But if they are, and if it is a safe relationship that can hold honesty, that can hold what you are thinking or feeling or how something is impacting you, then you can say something. <laughs> Obviously, it's a good time to say something when you know it's going to make the relationship better, even if it's hard. So I am really close with my sister. We went through a lot of years of not having very good communication and not always treating each other super well. And we've both done a lot of our own work and our relationship is now in a really good place. But I remember there was a time when she would, like I was saying before, let things kind of fester. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, I think everything was fine. And then she'd blow up at me. She'd just start coming at me and yelling at me and criticizing me and accusing me of things. And I was like, what, where is this coming from? I had no idea that you were so upset about this or that this bothered you or that you'd been hanging on to this for this long. I had no idea. And it's honestly not fair. If someone has an issue with you and they don't bring it up and then they end up exploding it on you later on, that's not fair and it's not good for the relationship. And so I said as much to her, I said, you know what? Like, I understand that it might be hard for me to hear if you have a complaint or I've done something that bothered you or, you know, something hasn't sat well with you. I understand that it might be hard for me to hear that honesty. But if you could just let me know when those things happen, if you could just like bring it up in like a respectful way when it's not this huge deal, if you could just bring it up like that, talk to me about it, we can work it out and move forward. I would really appreciate that because when you let things fester and then blow up at me, it makes me feel unsafe in the relationship. It makes me lose trust in you. And it makes me just sort of want to keep you at arm's length because it does not feel good to be blown up at. And so it makes me feel less close to you. And so I spoke up about that because my only intention with speaking up was to benefit the relationship. I want a better relationship with you. And this is creating difficult things in the relationship. This is having a negative impact on the relationship. And I want a better relationship. So I'm going to say something about this so that we can move forward and have a better relationship. The next time obviously when it's time to say something is if you are being hurt. If someone is directly doing something to you that is intentionally cruel or unkind or intentionally hurtful, you know that it is, then it's time to tell them to stop. Please stop. I don't like that. If you continue, I'm going to remove myself from the situation, from the conversation, you are not treating me well right now. This is not okay with me, right? Just really claiming where you're at, saying what's okay with you, and then saying, asking them to stop. And if they won't, 
than removing yourself from the situation or the conversation. That is time to speak up if someone is intentionally trying to hurt you, be cruel or unkind. Another time to speak up and say something. And this one gets a little bit more complex, but I do want to touch on it. But when it's time to say something is when it's something that you need to get out. It's been going around in you. You need to get it out, but you're not expecting any particular response. So I've done this work a lot and I've taught this work in the Shift Society. We have, um, we have a whole masterclass on there on letting go of your past. And one of the exercises that I teach in there is about writing a letter to someone who you have hurt or animosity or trauma or pain from something that happened and you've just been kind of carrying it around, but you want to say something, but you don't know how the person is going to respond. You don't know if they're going to take ownership, take responsibility, ask for forgiveness, apologize. You don't know, but you still want to say something. And so you write the letter or you have the conversation, but going into it, I wouldn't say that it's always appropriate to address this stuff with the person, especially if you have a specific expectation or need for a specific response or responsibility from them that you don't know or are probably pretty unsure you're not going to get. And so bringing it up is just going to result in more pain or hurt or re-traumatization depending on the situation, then I would say, no, it's not a great time to speak up about it if you have an expectation for a response that they likely won't be willing to or able to give you, then don't say anything. However, if you can go into it without an expectation of a certain response, just for you to be able to verbalize your truth, your experience, what that was like for you, what you went through, and just like leave it and being able to say, this was my experience. This is how it impacted me. This is why it was hard for me. Again, owning your own experience with it and that I just needed to let you know. (laughs) In case you didn't know, I needed to let you know for you to be able to verbalize that without an expectation of a response, then it would be appropriate to say something. Some guidelines for you. Take a second. Let me know in the comments, which one are you like? Yep, that makes sense. That is one that I'm definitely going to remember for next time. It's going to help me know when to say something. Let me know which one, or if there's a couple of them. If you want to learn how to speak up, in a way that is respectful and assertive and also in a way that people will listen to and respect, then get my masterclass, Speak and Feel Heard. It's going to teach you how to speak and feel heard. (laughs) Get on the waitlist for the Shift Society. Let me know what connected with you. Always good to have you here. Until next time, take good care.